Hi, this is Patrick with spyfu.com. Today, we're going to learn about five advanced Google search operators and how you can actually use them to help your business. Google has been using advanced operators in their search for so long that they might seem irrelevant today, but they are not. On the contrary, advanced search operators can help you target the right content and people, not only to boost your searches, but also your business. There are a lot of articles out there that will list off a bunch of different operators and their basic functions, including ours. But this video is gonna zoom in and give you practical usages of just a handful of these, specifically meant to help your website and your business. You ready? Let's dive in. Duplicate content on your site is not good. It confuses the search engine because they don't know which version to include or exclude from the index. They don't know which version to rank or lead the metrics. It's also a messy experience for the users and the owners of the content. A lot of articles out there will tell you how to use search operators to find duplicate content and stolen content. But when I was writing this tutorial and actually trying these methods, they didn't seem entirely practical. So first, let's just go over the basics and then I will give you some tips on how to actually apply this. Full disclosure, the next example is directly from an Ahrefs article. I'll explain why I'm using it in a second. This is a description of Abercrombie and Fitch pants from the site ASOS.com. You may or may not be able to tell, but the description seems to come from a third party site. An easy way to check for this is with search operators. First, the site operator, which looks like this, and then a pasted chunk of the actual text in the description. Let's put it all together. Site colon ASOS.com and a space, and then quotation mark, the modern Abercrombie and Fitch is the next generation of effortless all American style, quotation mark. It looks like that chunk of text is all over their site with 2,800 results. And that's just on ASOS.com alone. Having some duplicate text on things like product descriptions isn't great, but it also isn't the end of the world. You do have the option of creating unique descriptions for each individual product, but the cost of creating all those might outweigh the benefits of having a stronger SERP presence. If nothing else, this is a good time to reflect on your priorities and where you want to allocate your resources. But in order to get to this point, you have to be able to identify these chunks of text in the first place. And sometimes that's tough. I spent a long time trying to find my own unique example using this technique, both for our site and for other retail sites. But it turned into a carnival of copying and pasting random chunks of text with no duplicates in sight, which is why I had to use an example from an Ahrefs article. If this is your case, then I suggest using a software that can identify existing duplicates on your site. One example being the freemium software SiteLiner. Simply run the domain you would like to see, and if you're noticing duplicates, open up that page. Look for the phrases that you think might be duplicated on your site, and then use the operators to check Google for even more. You can even double check to see if that same copy is being used on other sites around the web. Which brings us to our next important thing, checking for plagiarism. Quality content gets noticed and sometimes it's straight up stolen. Though duplicate content and plagiarized content happen for different reasons, the technique for finding them using search operators is actually very similar. If you suspect that some of your content is being stolen, Here's how you go about finding it. We'll stick with the piece of content from the first example. Except this time, instead of having it search exclusively on ASOS.com, we're going to have it search on every site except ASOS. We'll do this by adding a minus in front of the site operator. So it all looks something like this. Minus site colon ASOS.com space quotation the modern Abercrombie and Fitch is the next generation of effortless all-American style. Quotation. 11,000 results. Again, these are sites that are not ASOS.com, but have the exact same product description that ASOS does on its site. This might not be a case of plagiarism per se, but instead 
a giant universal product description for Abercrombie. But if you find content out there that you know was written in-house, possibly by your own hand, that means someone copied your work. How you deal with plagiarized content is up to you. But regardless of what you do, it's always good to discover who is presenting your content as their own. Because let's be honest, they'll probably do it again. Updating and revamping your site is helpful when you want to improve your SEO and usability. But sometimes the byproducts of this restructuring can get messy and things can fall through the cracks. Finding these issues can be made real easy with the right operators. Funny enough, our site, spyfu.com, recently went through a massive site structure redesign. So when I was writing this script, we were actually in prime position to uncover a few of these loose ends for our own site. So these next examples might be personally embarrassing, but hopefully they help you guys out. So let's start this journey with HTTPS, which represents the secure version of Hypertext Transfer Protocol. HTTP. As more people shop, network, and do business online, companies need to make sure that the bulk of their site is secure. This is both for practical privacy reasons, as well as the fact that Google boosts HTTPS sites and frequently punishes HTTP sites in the ranks. Let's talk about how to find possible pages on your site that are not secure. Let's first use the site operator and then the in URL operator. Since we want to find pages that are not HTTPS, we're going to use the minus sign in front of the in URL operator. So it looks like this, minus in URL colon HTTPS. In SpyFu's case, it will look like this, site colon spyfu.com space minus in URL colon HTTPS. For SpyFu, we were able to find a few interesting things. One is that our help section isn't on HTTPS. I actually had to double check and make sure that was intentional. It turns out, yes, that was on purpose, but your site might be different. This is especially true if it's a login page or a checkout page. Even landing pages and product pages should be actively secure by using HTTPS. Finding and closing these gaps will make your site more attractive to users and Google. Another thing we discovered is that our previous help and tutorial section, resources.spyfu.com, was still showing up on the SERP. Upon clicking on them, I realized that many of them just led to 404s. Not good. These are those loose ends I was talking about. These pages should be removed from the SERP by de-indexing them. I'll include a link in the description below telling you exactly how to do that. But now that we know what's already out there, we can follow this string and try and find more content like this to de-index. So let's dig for those resources pages using the site and in URL operators. All of these should be de-indexed. And after I wrap up on this video, we'll start on that project. You might be surprised on what you'll find about your own site when using these operators. I do have to note that this technique isn't as steadfast as it used to be. A lot of seemingly unsecure HTT pages nowadays actually redirect to an HTTPS page, even though that full URL might not show up in the SERP. But it's still a great and simple audit for your site to make sure everything you want to be secure is secure. And to make sure that your aging content isn't just leading people to 404 pages, like we saw in the last example. Another fun way to find dead and dying content is to add a minus www operator after the site operator. So it all looks something like this site colon asterisk dot spyfu.com space minus www. You'll notice with this one, I added that asterisk before spyfu. The asterisk means it's a wildcard word, meaning we're basically telling Google that the URL doesn't have to start with spyfu.com. It can start with any word. For example, university. university.spyfu.com and resources.spyfu.com don't even exist anymore. Fortunately, many of these already redirect to our current 
help.spyfu.com and spyfu.com slash blog. But these results, university.spyfu and resources, should also be de-indexed. So they don't show up on the SERP at all. You can search by highly specific categories that relate to your site, subject, or the content you're creating. Let's say I'm wanting to get on some forums revolving around house paint, possibly to post appropriate links to my site, possibly to see what the community is discussing around my industry. Let's take another look at the in URL operator to identify forums and combine it with the subject matter we want to focus on by using the in text operator. So it'll look a bit like this in URL colon forum space in text, colon, house paint. Over 5 million results might be a little less focused than you would like, so feel free to zoom in. Maybe try including in URL, colon, edu for more reputable results, or maybe expand your in text to get more specific on what you actually need. Something like desert house paint. When you find the right article, you can reach out to these guys and see if you can get a backlink to your site or content. If it's a forum, you might be able to drop a link in there yourself, but we'll talk more about that in the fifth and last example. Let's do another search because these operators can be really powerful when you're looking for a specific topic. Let's say you're wanting to sell affordable Christmas gifts on your site. You can have the in URL just be affordable dash gifts. Then you can mess with the in title as much as you want. Maybe add one word at a time until you reach a specific focused small set of results. Something like in title colon Christmas gifts under $20. It's even more powerful to use this operator with the date range operator, which you can activate directly from the SERP. Just go up to tools, and click the drop down under any time. Pick a time span you want and see the fresh content and links that your competition is getting. This can work for holiday and seasonal stuff, but also is a great way to find the newest articles, news, and products in any niche. Once you find something new and relevant to your business, maybe try and swoop in and see if you can get in on that fresh action too. We talked a little earlier about hunting down recent and relevant backlinks. Now let's talk about outreach, specifically on social media and networking platforms. In order to do this, it's helpful to have the name of the individual you would like to contact. So for an example, I'm going to type in the name of an independent content creator, Freddie Wong, followed by a group of different social sites I would like to search. So it's Freddie Wong, then a parentheses, site colon twitter.com, then let's put a pipe in there to represent multiple possible sources for the search. You can also use the word or instead of the pipe. They do the same thing. Then let's add site Facebook, add another pipe, and then site LinkedIn. And then we'll close it all off with that other parenthesis. It looks like he and his company mostly reside on Twitter for their social interactions. And though video results show up, you'll notice that they're Twitter links, not YouTube, because we didn't add YouTube to the list. But it seems like if I wanted to reach out to him, Twitter would probably be the best place to start. But what if you don't have the person's full name? Let's say you met someone at a convention and you only remember a couple details about them, maybe their first name and the company that they worked for. I'll be the guinea pig for this one. So Patrick space spy foo, and then let's keep the Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Booyah, there I am, including my LinkedIn and my full name in case you wanted to stalk me. Please don't stalk me though. It's an interesting technique to help make connections or at the very least help fill up a Rolodex with potential contacts and clients. Quick side note, SpyFu actually has a strong platform for finding the contact information of individuals within a company. This was specifically created to help you build those connections quicker. I'll put a link in the description below to a quick video that explains how to use that tool for this very purpose. We touched on this approach a little earlier in the video. So let's go back to finding forums and discuss how to actually engage with people using this technique. There are a lot of big active forums out there. Examples could be TechCrunch, Quora, 
even Yahoo Answers. People will frequently ask questions or start a conversation on these forums. If it's something you're an expert at, or better yet, if it relates to a product you sell, you can share your expertise and honest advice to curious minds. Sometimes you can even slip a link in there to your site or product. It even works on huge, less niche forums like Reddit, and you can get really specific. Let's enter site colon Reddit with the in title being House Paint Phoenix. House Paint Phoenix is a pretty specific phrase, especially when searching on only one site, but we still got over 200 results for it. Pretty cool, right? Let's click on this top one. The original poster had a specific question about painting stucco. The top commenter definitely gave helpful advice, but you'll notice they also dropped a link in there. It could be to their own site or a different site that they think is helpful. Either way, that link is almost certainly going to get clicked. Keep in mind, you can post links on some of these forums and others you can't, but that's not really the point. It's about building a good relationship with your community. And these communities are generally more savvy than your average internet user. If you post a whole bunch of unhelpful links to your site, to a whole bunch of different forums, that's how people are going to start seeing your brand as a spammy nuisance. But if you genuinely post relevant content that actually helps people, you can begin to build brand loyalty for extremely cheap. So there you have it, five practical ways you can use Google's advanced search operators to actually help your business. Keep these operators in mind the next time you're trying to find a specific article, forum, or contact. You might be surprised on how much you can find to help build relationships and improve your business. As always, thank you for watching.